I am absolutely terrified right now. You're joining me in the 86th minute. I'm about five seconds ahead of what you're seeing here. And um, it's one all. And to be fair, both teams have had massive chances to win this game today. I would argue that maybe Liverpool have just edged it. In terms of big chances, they missed a five on one. Oh my God. If you haven't seen the highlights, then you'll see exactly what I mean. It was quite literally five Liverpool players against one. Um, not exaggerating. And they somehow didn't score. They hit the bar. But honestly, I think in general, I would say that Liverpool might just edge it for me. But I don't think we deserve to necessarily lose this game. I think a draw wouldn't be a, an unfair result. So we will see what happens live. You guys know every now and again, especially in the big games, I love to uh, to hit record and do my Operation Arsenal live with the game going on. So what are my thoughts on the game so far? Um, well, I think we've been let down by one particular area of the pitch, and that is our left side. I truly, truly believe that today we would be winning this game way, way, way more comfortably uh, if we had potentially Tommy Asu at left back or Timber at left back, Tierney at left back, who's out on loan in Spain, injured right now. And also, if we had started maybe Trossard on the left side, look, it, it's so tricky because, look, Zinchenko is an incredible player. He's te technically one of our best players. And we do rely on his creativity at times. And Martinelli is, well, he's Martinelli. He's an incredible player. But the reality is today, they've both had absolute stinkers. Zinchenko completely awful today, honestly. Going forward, he's been great. There's, there's been times where he's been taking on players, like nice little flicks here and there, and he's had a couple of shots. But defensively, just a liability. And Martinelli, I think that might go down as his, potentially one of his worst performances for Arsenal. Um, Saka has just slipped with both feet. I don't think that's... Surely they're not going to do anything about that with VAR. The Liverpool players are complaining that it's dangerous play, but come on, that would be incredibly harsh. He's just slipped. That's one thing I, I want to mention as well. I'm not saying that Anfield is a terrible stadium. I'm not. It's one of the best in the world. But the players are slipping everywhere today. What What is going on? Is it? Is it just a bit... I don't, I don't know. Is it just a wet pitch or are, are everyone's studs not working properly today? Something very strange. All the players seem to be uh, slipping and sliding. But um, yeah, I mean, it can happen. By the way, what's up with the Enketia substitution? Little bit of a strange one, in my opinion. I don't think Jesus was doing anything bad. Jesus, Jesus, however you want to say it. Uh, maybe it's a tired thing. He, he, maybe he couldn't do the full 90s day. Who knows? But um I, I'm going to stick with what I've said about Zinchenko and Trossard, not Trossard, and Martinelli. I think Trossard probably, with hindsight, could have come on a bit earlier because he has really helped the game. And obviously, we don't have anyone to step in for Zinchenko right now other than maybe Kivior. And that is a big ask to get Kivior coming in against Liverpool. For me, this is bigger than the City game. If, if we score in the next five minutes or whatever and win the game, it goes down as probably the biggest result of the season. So... Yeah, this is an absolutely massive five minutes and um, we're doing all right. We look OK. We, we, we're we we're comfortable on the ball. We're not losing our heads. I think Arsenal from years ago would have absolutely collapsed at this point and uh, we'd be 3-1, 4-1 down. As soon as Liverpool scored, basically, we would have just been heads down and I don't mean that in a good way. We'd, we'd lose our heads and capitulate. Erdegaard's just got the he's got the ball in midfield. He's driving forward. We've got we've got some numbers going forward here. And Trossard's just lost it, unfortunately. How good has Trent been, by the way? I know he's missed that huge opportunity for Liverpool when he hit the bar. But his pass to Salah, oh my god, that that Salah goal, whilst I think it's terrible defending from Zinchenko, you've got to give credit to Trent for the pass and Salah for the finish itself. I mean, it's it's unstoppable. It really is. And um, I don't think there's anything Raya could have done. I just think my tweet at the time was Zinchenko, like, just just try. He just stuck his foot out and that was it. But I, I get it. Salah is one of the best right wingers of all time. And um, 
it's not easy to defend against him, especially when, in my opinion, Zinchenko isn't even a particularly good defender. And I think that's a, an area of the pitch that we need to explore improving. We're linked with a couple of left backs over the years, Grimaldo being one of them. But of course, he's gone on and signed with Leverkusen and he's arguably the best left back in the world right now. <laughs> or left wing back, left midfielder pretty much at Leverkusen. We have a corner, Trossard to take it. Of course, he bagged a hat-trick here last year for Brighton. Let's see if he can maybe swing in and get an assist here. God, if we score, I'm going to absolutely lose my mind. It's a good ball. I mean, it was a good ball, but unfortunately, we weren't able to do anything with it. We've got five minutes added on. We've played almost two. So um, I think it's looking likely that we're going to get a one-all draw here. I did, however, make a prediction that Havertz would score in the 93rd minute. So, in exactly one minute, I will be expecting a screamer from the lanky German, the BFG. Rice has been incredible again today, by the way. Erdegaard in the first 15 minutes was unplayable. Honestly, in general, the first 15 minutes, I think that might have been one of the best performances of the season so far. And obviously, at, at Anfield, you cannot keep that up. So, it doesn't surprise me that it's kind of slowed down a little bit since then. Okay, 30 seconds and it will happen. I'm 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 just I'm forcing it to happen. Okay, it's back with the keeper. Come on, Raya. He's booted it. He's absolutely booted it up top. Why? Why has he done that? He could have he could have held on to that. Oh, he's just wasting a bit of time so we can get to the 93rd and then score with Havertz. I'm I'm telling you. I'm pleading it to happen. Come on. Here we go. 93 minutes in. Let me give my man of the match quickly. Um, probably Trent, if I'm honest. For Arsenal, I'd say it's either Gabriel or maybe Declan Rice. Saliba has been immense as well. It's just so difficult to call it. Everyone's having such high performance levels this season. Saliba has been given man of the match. There you go. Sorry, player of the match. So we've got 30 seconds for this Havertz winner. Just watch. We're going to throw. Okay, we've got a throw. Ben White. He's launched it towards Nketiah, who isn't going to win that against Van Dijk. Havertz on the ball here. Come on, mate. You've got 20 seconds. Go. <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to happen, guys. But is a draw a good result? I think it probably is. I think a draw is, is a good result. I, I, I wouldn't say we... We, we will look back and go, oh, that's, that was unfair. We should have won that game. I, I don't think so at all. I think going to Anfield and getting a point is always a good result for any team. And uh, in terms of the title race, we haven't lost out on anything, have we? Villa also drew this weekend. Um, Newcastle lost. Tottenham won, of course. United lost. So I don't think we really lose out by getting a draw here. And that is going to be a free kick. Oh, no. 30 seconds. Oh, here we go. Squeaky bum time. This is it, guys. The moment of truth. Salah on the ball. Puts it into midfield. Canate wants to get forward. Please do. Leave a gap for Havertz to explore. <laughs> I think that's going to be it, guys. 20 seconds. They're just passing the ball around like idiots right now. They need to get it forward. Oh, no, they don't. Don't do it. I take it back. Don't do it. Okay, a cross comes in. No one's there. Oh, Zinchenko just heads it back. I think that's it, guys. A one-all draw at Anfield. Do you know what? It really isn't the end of the world. I think, I think that could have been a lot worse, right? It could have been a lot worse. Let me go ahead and switch my other camera angle. There we go. Right. Let's just refresh this as well so we get the latest up-to-date stats. This is a really good representation of the match. It was very, very up and down for both teams. We had moments of uh, dominance for each team, moments where they were struggling. Look at the stats up here as well. It's really, really quite even. I would stand by my original uh, conclusion, and that is that it was probably just about edged by Liverpool today. I think them being at home obviously has a huge uh, emphasis on that. There's a reason 
having a huge crowd behind you is going to give you the edge sometimes in these games. But I'm very proud of the team today. I think we actually, we, we really did well. Same with last season. You know, we come away with a draw. Obviously, last year it felt worse because we went 2-0 up. But um, I think today this is a fair result. And I would argue that Liverpool have been very quietly but surely dispatching of teams. They've been climbing the table. And um, it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that we've we've drawn with them today. I think you're, you're looking at, on form, the best two teams in the Premier League right now, with Man City having a bit of a dip in form um, and the other other clubs obviously not quite up there with us. I think th this was an incredible match to watch. I think it, it got a little bit messy towards the end. You could see a few tired legs and it's obviously Christmas and players might have other things on their minds right now. What are they going to have for Christmas Day on for, for dinner? <laughs> um, but genuinely, like, you, you just look at the the United Liverpool game last week and it's just a completely different game. You've got a team going there to just grind out the most offensive match. And I get it. I understand it. They're in a tough period right now. But isn't it nice to watch two teams just going for it? And that's why I always massively, massively respect Liverpool. The way they play. I love the recruitment. They they <laughs> they do buy, buy well. They do get good players. And I'm still very much not sold on Nunez. Um, but some other signings obviously over the years have been incredible. Um, I think actually both teams can be very proud of the performance today. Only two subs is, again, frustrating for me. But who who do you bring on? Reese Nelson, maybe. Smith Rowe's just coming back from injury. Jorginho's been struggling with a knock recently. El Nenny's not really going to add much. Cedric, Kivior, and obviously you've got a goalkeeper. Um, I don't think that was really going to do anything. But we'll end it here looking at the table after that result before we go to West Ham. Or is it at home? I think it's, yeah, it's West Ham at home next. Um, can you see the whole table? You can't really, but um, Sheffield United, Burnley, Luton, Nottingham Forest, Everton and Crystal Palace below Wolves there. Um, top by a point. God, it's absolutely crazy that next time on the actual halfway point game, if Arsenal and Liverpool fail to win and Villa beat Man United, Aston Villa will be top of the league. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. It really is. But that draw means we've drawn four games now. It's two losses, 12 wins. I'm I'm not unhappy with that. Genuinely, I'm not. I, I think that's a perfectly decent enough result. And uh, we'll be back at the Emirates after Christmas and hopefully we'll pick up the three points against West Ham. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.